Welcome to another sermon from All People Christian Church. It is our hope that this message will encourage, inspire, and challenge you in your walk with God. ...about uh, the godly role of women. Also, I'm a little bit in trembling fear because of the culture war we've had over the last several decades, and especially in the last decade or so with men and women, and it kind of becoming more of a competition versus a cohesive godly divine plan so that we could work together versus combat each other because it's not that way yeah. amen so when i give this message please take everything i say as i'm talking about what god says about women in the bible and i'm not coming against either men or women or if you're single or you're married and married without children or married with children so i don't want to have to qualify everything i say but even as i went to plan this message i was like oh God, please help me because I don't want to offend anybody because everyone's in a slightly different place. And even in my lifetime, the role of women has dramatically changed within culture. But the way God designed women from the very, very beginning has always remained the same and will never change. And so same with men. You don't have to apologize for being a male or a female because if God made you that way, then that's the way you're supposed to be. Amen? Okay, good. So promise me that if you get offended by anything I say, Go back and read the Bible, and you'll see for yourself <laughs> what I'm sharing. Amen? So, again, happy Mother's Day to all of you. And um, I'm just so grateful that I get to be a mom because one of the things that I always wanted to grow up and be, which might be contrary, again, to popular opinion, it was like I always wanted to grow up and be a mom. Even I remember being very, very young, being like less than 10 years old, seeing little, little ones going, oh, I want to be a mom one day. I want to have children. I also had a family with five kids in it. So I loved being a part of a big family. And I really enjoyed being a part of a big family unit. Not everybody has that, but I always had someone to fight with or play with, you know, whatever was the case that day or that moment. And um, I really enjoyed it because my parents, even though they were not perfect people, none of us are, uh, Brad and I are not perfect parents, ask our children. Um, but one thing I think that they could say about us and I would say about my parents is that they loved us. They loved us so much. They loved us deeply. They loved us passionately and they would do anything for us. Um, I want to say about my mom who's no longer with me. She passed away several years ago. She um, actually had a lot of mental and emotional health issues that we didn't really know about. It wasn't talked about. We didn't really understand it till later and she never really unfortunately got help with it but one thing about my mom is that she was so devoted to each one of her five children she would get up at 5 a.m 4 30 a.m to get me to the ice skating rink at 5 a.m before school then go home make sure everyone else got off to school then come back and pick me up and she always had a thermos of hot chocolate for me every single time she would do these amazing things for all of us she would make sure we had rides everywhere to do all these things and she was so busy doing so many things for all of us and it was just what she did she made sure she had groceries in the house and she threw us birthday parties and we had family vacations and we did all of these things and um she just it was just part of who she was what she did every single day and when i was a child i didn't really completely understand i definitely appreciated my mom but not totally until i had my own children <laughs> And I saw what you had to do all day, every day, whether I was working part time or whatever, it was still my children were my first priority during that season of my life. And they still are a high priority, but now I'm empty nest. And so they're, it's not the same. So I wanted to talk to you about the godly role of women. And I'm going to get this down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here I go. Okay, so the godly role of women. So I wanted to share with you, um, of course, we know that not every woman is a mom. Um, and we know that every woman does have a God-given destiny and role that is distinct and valuable. So if you're younger and single and you're like, I'm just in my first year of college, like, I don't know how this relates to me. Or you're a male and you're like, how does this relate to me? Well, you hopefully one day will fall in love, get married, and have a wife and a mother. Or you can also think about how you should treat your mom, your sister, um, the women you know, you work with, you go to school with, and you, and you live with. So as we look at the role of women from a biblical perspective, it's clear that men and women were designed to work and live and enjoy each other. Um, again, you know, there's this old book that was written many years ago called Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus because sometimes, like, you're talking and you're like, what? Like every once in a while, Brett and I will be talking and be like, why would you say that? Or he'll say something. I'm like, who would ever think that? And I'm like, 
now after being married almost 30 years, he would or a man would. And we were joking around. I forget. I think it was with AJ and some of the people. We were talking about how guys, the, the way the guys like to ha hang out and have fun is to poke fun at each other, to tease each other, sometimes mercilessly, and to just be like, oh, that's super funny. Yeah, dude, whatever. <laughs> if women hang out, you don't do that. You don't like poke fun at each other. You don't make fun of each other. You don't talk about how they, they look, they talk, they act. A guy would be like, dude, you need to get your hair cut. Like if a girl said that to another girl, she would like completely unfriend her and be like, can you believe she said that? Oh my gosh, oh, forget her. And then all of their friends would like dump her too. And they're like, oops, we just don't, that's not the way it goes. So if a guy says that to a girl, if he, if I go and get my hair done and I come home, he'd be like, what'd you do to your hair today? It's not going to go well. Yeah. No. So, but that's okay because God made us the way that we are for a reason. And that's okay. We balance each other out. We can enjoy each other. And so we're not working against each other. Again, we're working together. Amen? So I wanted to look at um, the idea that the Bible is clear that we're all created equal. Both men and women are his creation. We know that from the very beginning of Genesis. God created man, and then he created all these animals. And he was like, hmm... He still doesn't have the companion that he needs. He needs someone that can talk and interact with him, share life with him, do life with him, and actually start a family. So he created Eve, and he said that she was the perfect person for him. Therefore, we can celebrate and appreciate the divine differences between the two and not be like, why are men like this? Why are women like that? Just actually kind of laugh, joke about it, and have fun with it, and appreciate that. I appreciate that Brett can do different things than I can, and he appreciates that I can do different things than he does, that we think of different things that need to get done and how to take care of those things. And so we can realize that whether you're single, you're married, or you are um, parents, that you work together. The reason why we are different is so that we can take care of different things. If God wanted everyone to be the same, we would have just had – one gender, either all men or all women. But he saw that that's not what he wanted to do. It says that he created them male and female in his image. Amen? Amen. So I wanted to look at the life of a very important, um, this is actually, this one is not me. It's sticking. We skipped a, okay. So we're going to look at um, Mary. I know I'm going to read this first as we go through. So we're going to look at Mary. Jesus' mom, influential woman, I would say, pretty, pretty much known throughout all history, all time. Um, so we're going to look at some of the things that she was. We know that she was a faithful follower of God. She was a young mother. She was a caregiver and nurturer of Jesus, the savior of the world. And we know that later on she was a widow. So how do we know that she was a faithful follower of God? We're going to go back and read. this part of the Bible. It's in Luke. And this is the story of, of her, Jesus' um, conception and uh, his birth. And or actually, his birth comes later. But I love the story of Luke. It's actually one of my favorite uh, sections in the Bible, my favorite gospel, I have to say, if I had a favorite, because I love this particular story. So we see that in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, that's Mary's much older cousin who had also a miraculous birth, God sent his angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. So right here we see that they're both uh, important people because we know that Jesus is going to come through the lineage of David because hundreds of years before it was prophesied that Jesus would be born to someone in the line of King David. So even though they weren't wealthy, they came from this tiny town that not a lot of people heard of, that wasn't a place of notoriety where like big things happened. He was this, Joseph we know too, was also a faithful follower of God. If he was going to marry this woman who would then be the mother of the savior of the world. So Gabriel appears to her and he says, greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. And says, confused and disturbed. <laughs> Because she's got this giant angelic being who's like, greetings, you're going to, this great thing's going to happen to you. And she's like, oh my goodness, what is going on here? So he says, don't be afraid. Right away, he puts her mind and her heart to rest. He says, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will get, conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. 
he will be very great and be called the son of the most high. So she's probably maybe even 13 at this age, this point, because we know that if you do the math, when you conceive and have a baby, it takes nine months. So historians have found that she's probably most likely around the age of 14, somewhere between the age of 13 to 15-ish. And so she's really young. And God is, this angel is saying this to her. And she says this, I love this. Um, she says, we skip down because she's like, how's this going to happen? I'm not married yet. I've never been with a man. And the angel replies, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. And so the baby born will be called the son of God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you've said about me come true. And then the angel left her. That's a pretty powerful response that she's like, I just don't know how this is going to happen. The angel tells her. And she says, again, she's not married. <laughs> she's young. She's not super highly educated, but she is a follower of God because we know she says, I am the Lord's servant. May everything that you have said about me come true. She, she embraces this amazing thing that she's going to have the son of God. And no one is, this has never happened before. It's never happened since. And she's like, I'm going to do this. God's going to help me. So we know that she is able to follow God, she's able to listen to God, and she's able to respond to him with this amazing, awesome attitude. To be honest, if it was me, I'd be like, no, nah, I don't know about this. I, I mean, I'm, I'm at just eighth grade, ninth grade. I don't, I don't know. Like, we're, I'm, I'm engaged to this guy. Like, is he going to believe me? What's going to go on? What's going to happen? So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But we see that she just has such an amazing heart and attitude that she's able to be this faithful follower of God. Again, she was a very young mother. She was a caregiver and nurturer of Jesus, the Savior of the world. I mean, what an awesome responsibility that was yeah. to be able to raise the Son of God, to be able to be the first person he relies on, to eat, to be changed, to be taken care of, to be cuddled, to be held, to be looked after. And then we know that she was a widow because later on, how do we know this? In, Joseph, in um, uh, Jesus' public ministry at this point, he's 30 years old, he there is no mention of Joseph. We know that he's now passed on. And so he's no longer there. So she's, she's a widow. And so she goes through all these stages of life. And uh, women have these different stages and phases. So men cannot have children. I know that um, there's all kinds of things trying to happen out there. But biologically, they don't have the same um, uh, biology. They don't have the same makeup. They cannot, they cannot conceive and bear children. And that's okay. So that's the one way that we're very different than men. And that's a powerful thing that we have as women. I know that the name Eve that God called um, Eve, that name is because it's, she's the mother of the living. Her name actually means life, which is really cool. So I want to move on. And then we also know as a widow, she was cared for by Jesus' disciple John. When, when Jesus was on the cross and he was going through this brutal crucifixion that Brett talked about during communion and dying for us, Jesus looks out because he cares for his mom and he, he loves his mom. And I mean, I can't imagine what his mom is going through watching her son being crucified. I just honestly can't put myself in that place. And, and she, he looks at her and he looks at John and he wants to make sure that his mom is taken care of. And he speaks to them and he says, today, this is your son and today, this is your mother. And so she goes from not only being a widow, but to a widow who has now buried her firstborn son. This is a lot. These are a lot of things that she does. But it's powerful because God takes care of her, He takes care of her every need. So I wanted to talk about how by God's design, women are three different things. There are also other things, but we're going to talk about these three. So we
more empowered to do the things that I do because God has called me to do them, and no one is making me do them. I do it out of a heart to love and to bless other people. And that's a gift from God because to be able to do that is, is hard. A lot of times you're thinking, what about me? What about my time? What about my way? What about my plan? Well, that's relevant to all of us. We think about that whether we're young and we're male or female or whatever. But at the same time, it's such a joy to serve and help and encourage others. Amen? Amen. So submitting, wow, even more loaded of a word, submission. I mean, you're going to submit to a man? <laughs> I submit to my husband as unto the Lord. And a lot of times he submits to me and what I want and how I feel. So it's a partnership. I submit to him because I can, because I trust him, because I, I believe he's honorable and I respect him. He's not going to do me wrong. He's not going to go out and like do something crazy like, well, I'm going to buy a boat and a Maserati and, you know, like, no, nothing for you. He's not that guy. So I can trust him and I can know that he's looking out for me and my children. I mean, if you know anything about Brett, he's a planner. <laughs> so <laughs> he... <laughs> yes, he is a great planner. He's a type A, I'm a type B, but now over the 30 years, we've become more similar, but it's good, these differences. So my sister, who actually led me to the Lord and was a good friend of Brett, she was actually at a, um, they were at some kind of a meeting because they were both in ministry and they were talking about getting some quality um, health care for people in ministry when he was young. And she said, Brett raised his hand and she knew that whoever he married was going to be well taken care of and thought of. She said um, he raised his hand. He's single. He's like a year out of college. He doesn't have any prospects. I'm not around yet. And um, he raised his hand and he was like, so, um, uh, so when we're talking about health insurance, uh, how do you start? Uh, can you start building that up as a single man for your um, maternity and your, your, your future wife and your family? You know, and um, she was like, wow, he's thinking ahead. He's thinking about his wife and making sure that she has maternity coverage and all these things. And so, yeah, I can say that for sure. That's a way that he's totally served and blessed our family. Um, but then supporting, the other idea is supporting. We support um, those we, we're around. You want to be encouraging and life-giving. You don't want to be a nitpicky woman who's just like, oh, men never do anything right. You know, that kind of like, I, I, it's, it's kind of a bummer because when we grew up watching TV, it was different. It was like, there was this very shared role of husband and wife and parents. And there used to be this show, for those of you that are, I, I, it was in reruns in black and whites. So I didn't see it very black and white, but it was called Father Knows Best. That was the name of the show. Yeah. Now you watch shows, there's, if there is a dad, he's a delinquent, a deadbeat, and kind of an idiot. And the kids make fun of him, the wife makes fun of him, and you're like, Wow, times have changed. And it's hard. I think it's hard for men because they feel kind of emasculated and kind of like, can I say anything? Should I not say anything? And am I so but we want to be supportive. We want to be supportive of those who are around, whether it's our husband, our children, our boss, uh, the people we work with. And so that's part of our God given role is to support those who are around. And again, I love doing that. I see the joy that comes to about when he feels supported. I see the joy that comes to my children when they feel supported. And the some of you that are in this room. And so that's part of what God has called us to do. Amen. So, and we look at Mary again. The reason she could do these things is because her husband loved, valued, and supported her. And how do we know that? Because let's be honest, she gets this message from this angel. She goes to Joseph and was like, I'm pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And he's like, uh-huh. <laughs> All right. So he being a loving, supportive man, it, it says that he decided to divorce her quietly because by the letter of the law in that day and age, they could have taken her outside of the village and stoned her to death. But because he loved her, he didn't want to see that happen to her, even though he thought she cheated on me. Like, well, honestly, who wouldn't think that? But then God in his sovereignty has an angel appear to Joseph and he says the same thing. So Joseph is like, no, we're in this, we're in this together. He's so supportive of her. They have to take this journey in her ninth month of her pregnancy all the way back for a census to be counted. So he has a donkey for her to ride on. He takes care of her. They get to um, Bethlehem and they don't have a place. She's in labor. She's, her water's breaking and she's got, he's running around. You see in scripture, he's running around trying to find a safe, comfortable place for her to have her labor and delivery. So he's loving for her. He's caring for her. He's making sure that that she's supported in her greatest time of need. Yeah. So we see them having that partnership, amen? Yeah. So unfortunately in our culture today, we don't often have healthy relationships where husbands 
and va uh, wives value, love, and serve each other. But if you have a husband or a wife that loves and values you and serves you, you it's, it's two-way. So I want to read this verse to you. This is in Ephesians 5, 33, hopefully it'll... Okay, perfect. Okay, so again, I say each man must love his wife as he loves himself. And, e and each and the wife must respect her husband. So if you feel loved, if you feel taken care of, if you feel supported, if you love, if the husband loves his wife as he loves himself, he's going to treat that wife pretty good. <laughs> he's going to make sure that she has the things she wants, needs, and cares about, that she feels loved, valued, and supportive. Oh, so cute. Eric's kissing Shelly right now. I'm just sorry. So sweet. <laughs> They've been married about the same amount of time as us? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and the wife, she respects her husband. Now, why does it say in this order? Because sometimes, as we know, some we have some people that have broken marriages in here, some people that are divorced, and, and I understand that, and I'm not coming against that. Everyone in my family, all of my other four siblings are divorced. So I understand it happens. It happens to people, and different things go awry and things go wrong. So this is not in any way condemning anyone who, who is in that place or has gone through that. But at the same time, if I know that, Brett is loving me and I feel that love. It's so easy for me to respect him. And as I respect him, he loves me more. And as I, um, it, it's, a, it's a cycle, it's a good cycle. So the, you need to love and respect each other as a husband and wife. But sometimes if you have a nitpicky husband or a nitpicky wife, and it's kind of like, it's hard to love that person if you feel they're always coming at you and they're always like, why didn't you do this? And why didn't you do that? Or we have so many more things to do. And they're never really grateful for what you're doing, it's hard to love them and respect them. And that's why this had to actually be written in a verse, a scripture to encourage us to do that. Amen. So we are reminded again that by God's design, women are both often wives and mothers. They're also major influencers of others. So I want to read um, this to you. It says, mothers are some of the most influential people in the world because a mother is a leader of both men and women. In fact, Mary and Joseph were Jesus' first role models. Um, there's an old saying. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Yeah, um, and that is the idea that women are taking care of these babies. Well, even from conception, they're, they, don't, they, they get to keep that baby all day, every day. This baby is growing. It's causing hormonal changes. It's causing major hunger. It's causing sometimes nausea. It's causing extreme exhaustion. <laughs> but you love that baby. You, you just treasure that child. And once you have that baby, guess who they most rely on? You. you yeah. They have to eat, even if they're bottle fed. <laughs> you still, you have to go through all these things. And the, both parents are involved. But primarily, the mom is the most involved from, from the moment of conception. And it doesn't mean that the dad is not impactful and not helpful and shouldn't be involved. He's very much there. But women are the first and most influential person in that child's life. Typically, women are the ones that are very much involved in the younger years as far as like emotional support, teaching and training and these things. Now the fathers are also involved, but then as the children get older and they tend to get a little attitude with their mama, the, the, the dad has to step in and be like, hey, <laughs> so you need to respect your mom. Don't roll your eyes at her. Do what she says. No, mom has a final say. Don't come to me and say, mom said it's okay if it's okay with you. No, what did mom say? You know, so it, that's just the basic way that it goes. And some of us are single parents. You're either a single father or a single mother, and you've had to do both, which I applaud you because that's incredibly hard to yeah. do to fulfill both roles. Incredibly challenging. Um, it can be done, but it's much easier with another person, especially yeah. depending on the child that you're dealing with in the moment. So if you saw my eyes go wide, I'm thinking of certain children I had. I love them all so passionately and so deeply some were just easier than others so um i want to look at again luke 35 and 38 the angel replied the holy spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you so the baby born will be called the son of god mary responded i am the lord's servant may everything about everything you have said about me come true and the angel left her so we know that she was a good mom because a little later on you see them go on this trip 
with a bunch of other Jews. I think it was for Pentecost. They were going for their annual trip to Jerusalem um, for Passover. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. Um, and so they all go together and they go this big caravan, uh, caravan and, and they leave. Well, Jesus isn't with them. Jesus has been raised so well. <laughs> He's sitting in the temple with these people decades older than him that have been studying scripture from a young age and and he's confounding them with his answers and his ideas and he's holding court with all these people so how many 12 year olds do you know that could stand in the front of a church or a temple or something and actually be smarter wiser and more well-mannered and more well-spoken than people that are in their 30s 40s 50s and 60s I, I know I wasn't like that at 12. I was like trying to figure out what I was going to wear and what boy I liked. And, you know, I was not at that place at all. And so she uh, evidence is she raised him well because he was able to do that. She was a really good mob, mom. She took her life of God. She took her experience with God and she poured into her son. Obviously, Joseph did as well. He gets a ton of credit, too, because he was seen as the earthly father of Joseph. Huge responsibility. But we know that she powerfully influenced him. And how many of us know that we were incredibly influenced by our moms, our teachers, our coaches, these other people? Um, the fact is more women are teachers than men at this point. And there are a lot of great men teachers, but I'm looking around at my kindergarten teachers. There's two of them here and, and others. And uh, you're just pouring into these people, these young people, their, their little minds and their, their cute little expressions and the things that they say. I teach figure skating and I teach one of my classes. They're so cute. They're all between like three to six and they say and do the cutest things and they're so funny and they come up and they hug you and they tell you about their dog and how it you know peed on the carpet and they're just like they just want to talk to you and you're just like, oh my gosh you're the cutest person um so these children are and they're so amazing and we just pour into them we love on them amen so we're powerful we're powerful influencers and that's a good thing it's a good thing to be someone who influences another. Maybe they're going to go on to do bigger, better, and greater things than you. But that doesn't really matter. Does it really matter in the end? Maybe you are an influencer and you are also an upfront person. You can be both. I think God has called all of us to be both in um, some way, shape, or form. We're not all just going to be, we're not all going to be as well known as everyone else. Um, and then we see too, as we go back and we see that by, by God's design, women are um, both wives and mothers quite often, women are influencers, and they're called to embrace different seasons of life. Amen. So we talked about, about that a little bit. We already talked about Mary, but I wanted to read this verse, these verses to you out of Proverbs 31. This, when I first would read Proverbs 31, and if you're thinking, well, God doesn't talk about women in the Bible. He actually talks about women a whole bunch in the Bible. We've got Ruth, we've got Esther, we've got Deborah, we've got JL. She was pretty fierce. You want to look up a story about her? Not a big one, but she was pretty, pretty intense. There's a lot of great women that God talks about in the Bible in the New Testament. You know, there's Lydia and there's others that are great women of God. They, they run businesses. There's uh, Hulda that's a prophetess in the Old Testament and holds this very high position in the kingdom. And so we know that God has a great and special place for women. He even has a whole chapter just devoted to women. It's Proverbs 31. And I remember reading through Proverbs 31 as a younger Christian woman and going, oh my gosh, she does all these things. She gets up early. She stays up late. She runs a business. Um, I had a friend, she's like, well, she has cute clothes and she works out. I was like, how do you know that? Says her arms are strong for her tasks and she's clothed beautifully and talks about how she takes care of her children and her servants and her husband. And, her, and she's like this amazing person. And I'm like, I don't think I could do all that. And so what I realized is a friend had said this to me is that she does this through different stages and phases of her life. She's not doing them all at once. Our culture today in our this day and age is like you're a superwoman. You have to look perfect, act perfect. You have to run your household. You have to take care of your children. You have to own your own business. You have to look, act, sound and be the be the, the one only person that does it all. That's not true. You have to have support to do these things. There's nothing wrong with owning your own business or working out or taking care of a family or um, having those around you that support and help you. But there's no way that a woman does this all by herself. I hate to break it to you, <laughs> but you might have a nanny or you might have a housekeeper or you might have your husband helps you grocery shop or cook or do whatever or takes the kids to practice or whatever it is. 
women don't do all those things, just like men don't do all those things. Right. So there's this ridiculous idea out there that I think is really hard on women in particular thinking, and you have to be all these things to, to be important, to make your life count. Just not true. Amen? Amen? So I'm going to read this to you. It says, when she speaks, her word is, are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches over everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. What a wonderful thing. I hope that that's the legacy that, that I leave, that we all leave um, as women, and that those that we are, uh, if we're a husband of, or we're son of, or we're a brother to, that you know, those are the kind of women that we're around that can have this godly, powerful influence without having to be loud and obnoxious and kind of like, I can do my own thing my own way. No, oh, all of us, men and women included, we have to submit to God, embrace who he's called us to be, to actually enjoy who he's called us to be, and to love who he's called us to be. Amen? So I just want to close in summary, but as I do that, I want to bring up two ladies. I'm going to bring up sweet Jade and sweet Liz. I wanted to pray for them and prophesy over them, but I'm going to go ahead and close this in summary. Yeah, no, you can come on up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so men and women need each other. We both serve important and vital roles. Remember to value and appreciate the divine differences of men and women. Amen? Amen. So what I wanted to do with something today is we're highlighting women. And we're going to highlight men in just a few short weeks. Father's Day is coming. So don't worry. Your, your time is coming. So I, I um, actually wanted to pray and prophesy over these precious ladies, like I said. And if you don't know what prophecy is, it's just praying and um, sharing a word of a message from the Lord for a particular person. Sometimes it can be for one person or it can be for a whole church or congregation. We often do that on Sundays um, during praise and worship. And this morning we had communion, but I was praying about it. And all of you, I wish I could pray and prophesy over all of you men and women, but we'd be here and we'd miss our Mother's Day lunches and brunches, and we'd all be hungry. And so I wanted to pray for this new, this newer member of our church. She, this is Liz Hassler, and she is amazing. She's a nurse. She's um, continuing her education, and um, she has two beautiful young sons in the other room, and her awesome husband, Josiah, is, they've just been coming out a little over a month. A couple of months. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and just pray for you. Lord, I just thank you so much for... Um, Liz, I thank you for the call of God on her life and the, the woman of God that she is. And I just believe that the word that you're speaking to me right now is just just calm. You're bringing a calmness and a peace to her soul. Um, she's very busy. She's very productive. She does a lot. But there's been almost, I sense, like an unrest in her soul um, in the last season, in the last, um, I don't know, even if quite a while. And, and it's not been like she's running from you or anything like that but almost like this feeling like there's there's more there's got to be more in my relationship with with god and um and 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 she's pursuing you i see that lord you're you're saying you are pursuing me you're you're running after me with all your heart and i just want you to know liz i'm bringing you into a season of comfort a season where there is change and there's there's different things moving and shaking and being moved around kind of like on a, a chess table and that's, that's not bad. It's, it's a good thing. Um, these are things that you've been praying for, that you've been believing for. And some things you've, been, you've even put off. You've got some amazing couple dreams in your heart. And you've thought, I don't know, like, maybe I should just not worry about that. Or you've even forgotten about certain things. But the Lord is saying, um, no, Liz, I've called you to continue to pursue these things. And as you've laid them before my feet, and you haven't gone after things just to bring glory and honor to yourself or to kind of just get ahead of what I've ha I've, I'm saying to do, I just want to let you know that I am going to make a way to open doors that no one will shut, that I'm going to bring finances and resources and, and help to bring these things to fruition. And you're going to have a team of people around you that's going to support and be with you and I just want you to know I'm so pleased by you. I love your heart for me. I love your heart for your husband and your children. I love your heart for other people, even the 
occupation that you chose nursing is is out of a, a love and a heart to want to serve me and to bless other people and to truly help and make a difference. So Lord, I thank you for this um, prophetic word and we seal it and we pray you continue to bless Liz today and all the days to come in your mighty name. Amen. This is our sweet Jade, and um, as we wanted to highlight women, we wanted to highlight someone who was a mom and someone who is single and hopefully a mother to me. Her sweet parents are here as well. And if you don't know Jade, I encourage you to get to know her. I encourage you to get both to know both of these ladies. They're very sweet, and they love the Lord, and they're just very servant-hearted. So, Lord, I just thank you so much for Jade. I thank you for what a bright light she is to you and to your kingdom, and she just brings so much joy and um, she's just got such a heart for you, and she's got an intensity about her. Um, I just believe you're saying that, that you put this inside of her, and sometimes it, it can be troublesome and bothering, bothersome to her. <laughs> she's like, why? Why do I feel so passionate about this? Or why do I feel so intense about this? Why can't I just let certain things rest? But, but God wants you to know, Jade, I made you this way. I made you bold. I made you courageous. I made you... Uh, uh, not only a woman of worth and of value, but a woman who who knows me and who can speak her mind and who can share things with a bold yet quiet confidence at times. You're not this loud, abrasive personality, but you, when people have a conversation with you, it's clear that you feel the way that you feel, <laughs> and that's okay. Again, I made you this way, and it, and I'm just wanting you to know that I'm going to continue to shape, form, and train you even into an even far greater woman than you already are. You are already so great. You've already got so many great character qualities and you value people and, and the things that are important. And I'm going to cause you to rise up and have a platform in um, many people's lives and even in culture at large, just by being who you are, being countercultural, yet being a woman of God, a woman of faith and a woman of conviction. And I've called you to speak clearly, to speak out, to share how you feel, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or even in a group setting. And I'm going to have you at times even in front of groups and large gatherings, and you're going to look back at this moment, and you're gonna, your mind is going to be blown. You'll be like, how did I get here? <laughs> Only God, and you're going to give all glory and honor to me, and I'm going to use you to change the hearts and minds of many young people, many um, young men and women to come, and I've called you to be a discipler of, of young women, to pour your life into others and watch them change, and you're going to be a multiplier of growth um, in my kingdom. So, Lord, we just thank you for this word again. We thank you for Jade. We thank you for what a powerful young woman of God she is, and we pray you bless her, and she would feel your great and unconditional and encouraging love around her. In your mighty name, amen and amen. amen. We hope you enjoyed this message from All People Christian Church. For more information about our church or for more sermons like these, please check us out on the web at allpeoplecc.com.